You know, lately it seems like I've just been doing Nintendo things. Uh, Switches, N64s, Game Boys, uh, Game Cubes. So, so let's do something different this week. Let's do something completely different, and let's let let's see what I got for this week. It's a Nintendo GameCube. Ah, dang it! All right, we'll do another GameCube. This one apparently can't read discs. And uh, if you want to see what happened the last time I got a GameCube that apparently couldn't read discs, uh, I'll put a link up here somewhere, and you can go check out that video. But this one apparently really doesn't read discs. But let's see if that is true. All right, here we go. Take our test disc, throw it in here, and turn her on. So the GameCube is held together by Game Bit screws, which are Nintendo's favorite way of trying to keep us out, but it doesn't because there's bits that are easily available. There are four screws on the bottom, one, two, three, and four, and they are deep enough just for an iFixit screwdriver. My other Game Bit screwdriver that I have, which is my cheapy one that I got from Amazon, will not reach these screws. I really should get a different one for this. So once you have all four screws out, you just simply will flip, you flip it over and the lid will come off just like that. To continue the disassembly, first thing we need to do is take out the back panel and take out the front panel and disconnect the joystick ports. And we have some bugs. You see a little friend has come to live. Well, he's dead. All right, quick dusting and we're good to go. All right, now it's time to undo a whole bazillion Phillips screws. Good news is, they're all the same. To get to some of the screws, you have to remove the two screws that are holding the fan assembly and power switch on. And then you can lift that out. And then there are three more under here. And then you can finally get to the one that's over here. The front screws are really tiny and thin. And they just hold these uh, metal shields onto the joystick ports. Or the, sorry, the memory card ports. I think now we should be able to just pop off the drive just like that. So it just comes off because there is a connector here that goes into the connector here. So let's just give this a little clean and we'll dust off. Now it sounds like the rattle is coming from underneath here. So I think I will have to take the board out and that is these screws here. But I will just be taking this apart just to find out what's making the rattle, get rid of it and put it all back. The heatsink has some wicked sticky thermal pads on the bottom of it, holding it on the uh, processor and all that stuff, so you don't really have to worry about the heatsink coming off. Let's see if we can get this out. There we go. So it's disconnecting from the power supply, which is this connection here to there. And it doesn't look like the rattle is there, so I'm going to have to take the shield out. We'll disconnect the switch and let's see if we can find the rattle.
Ah, found it. It was whatever this is. I don't, I don't know what that is at all. Let's throw it out. And while we got it all the way down, let's give it a dusting. All right, let's get the bottom all put back together now that we've got the rattle removed. Let's put the board back in. All right, why didn't any of you guys tell me that I forgot to hook up the power cord again? Man, sometimes you guys are just not helpful. I could save so much time. <laughs> If you guys would just tell me when I forget things, and I'm sure you will, in the comments down below. All right, the bottom is all put back together. So now I can just kind of move this off to the side a little bit. Let's uh, sweep away some of this dust and crap that came out of it. So let's get to the capacitors on here. To do so, we need to remove all of the screws in the bottom. I guess the capacitors are on the other side of the board. And there are all the capacitors. I'm going to disconnect these two wires here to make this easier. Focus. Okay, so I'm going to remove these uh, little wires here. I was going to take a picture of it, but luckily it's actually labeled brown and red right on the board. So I took off some of the caps, and if you think I'm going to show you how I remove uh, surface mount caps, uh, you think I'd probably show you my th how I put on thermal paste, because I don't need those kind of wackos and making comments in the, you know, in the comment section, because that's where you make comments. But um, if you look here, there is some electrolytic leakage going on. I found that on a couple of them. They weren't bad. Like, there's no damage or anything. It looks like they had just started. So we might have caught this uh, right uh, in the nick of time. So I'm going to keep uh, clean, taking the caps off, and uh, I'll uh, start putting them back on in a minute, as soon as I get the, this one cleaned up. Well, I have to say, this is my first time doing SMD caps, and uh, it's, it's not bad, but it's not the, not the most fun thing I've ever done on a board. Just I'm never sure if I've actually got it connected or not. That That's the biggest thing. So I'm going to continue doing the rest of the big caps, and then we'll start moving on to the little caps. And hopefully it still works after. All right, I got all the capacitors replaced. Uh, not, a, not a simple job, but not bad. Uh, one of the things I noticed is that when you have capacitors, obviously, as long as you match the... The value so like 220s 100s uh, then you can use whatever voltage but when it comes to smd caps it seems that the higher the voltage the bigger the cap gets so i didn't have like 6.3 or 4 volt 47 microfarad caps what i had was 16 volt and they barely fit on the original pads so i'm hoping that this works and i'm hoping i haven't screwed up anything but we'll find out when I put it all back together. So let's uh, let's try doing that now, I guess. So here is our optical drive. Let's put the board back in and see if it explodes. Well. There it goes. I'm either going to explode or it's going to work. Or just be the way it was before. I guess there's three options. Got it back together enough to test. Let's see what happens. That's a good sign. And no. Not reading at all. All right. I didn't want to have to do this. I was hoping that the capacitors were going to be enough to fix this laser, but maybe the problem is actually in the laser. Uh, I thought when I took out some of the capacitors and when I saw the, the uh, electrolyte residue, I thought, oh yeah, this is going to be it. But no, 
apparently it's not. So there, okay, so this is the pot you want to tweak. So there's a little tiny little silver circle in a black casing right here. You're not going to be able to see it because it is super tiny. Okay, so I'll put in a picture of it right here. And what you want to do is there are three points on this pot potentiometer. There's one point here, one point on the upper uh, right and bottom right. As long as you have your board the same direction as mine, where you can actually read the letters, it'll be the black probe goes on this side and the red probe goes on the bottom, uh, bottom right side. And you can see there we're getting 530 ohms. And that is typically where um, a retail drive comes in. So what we want to do is we want to lower that to, uh, to see if we can get the drive to uh, get some more power and actually work. Uh, we do not go lower than 150 ohms. If you do that, you are potentially going to send so much power, you will just burn out the laser. So don't do that. We're just going to take it down a little bit. I think I'll try going down to 400 and see if that is just enough that it needs to, in order to, to get this to work. So you get a small flathead screwdriver, or I'm just going to use a bit from my iFixit kit, and you turn it to the left and just a little tiny bit. I did a just, just a little fraction of a turn. Now we're going to check it again to see what kind of impact that made on it. So there, we're already down to 430. So I'm going to give it one more little tiny tweak. And see if we can get it down right to 400. Well, went too far. 350 or 345. Let's let's give that a try and see and see if that makes any difference whatsoever. All right, let's see what happens. Hey, it's reading. Awesome. All right. Uh, I'm going to have to turn it off because I need a controller. There we go. Let's plug that in. And let's uh, hold that down and we'll turn it back on again. All right, right back into reading. So this is good. We might have actually fixed it here uh, with a pot tweak. At least I know that my capacitor change didn't ruin the drive. <laughs> okay, so it is reading this game, no problem. All right, let's 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 try my other test discs and see what happens. There we go, Lord of the Rings. Ah, boots right up. Excellent. And these games are really scratched, so I know that if this is working, you know, it's going to read pretty much anything, especially brand new looking games. All right. Perfect. Okay. One more disc to try. Actually, let's do this way. Let's see. We're going to turn the GameCube on. Put the disc in and pretend like we just closed the lid. It gives to go to gameplay. There we go. All right, this GameCube is working. I, I think that's it. I think just to, unfortunately, I was hoping, I was really hoping the capacitors were gonna do it, but they didn't. And it ended up being a pot tweak. Now, we did not have to do that big of a pot tweak, uh, which is nice. So there is still room for, as this laser potentially degrades some more over the years, uh, you can adjust it a little bit more down to, you know, because we only put it at like 350, so we still got 
down to 150 before it's a problem. Uh, but by then, who knows? Maybe we'll have sentient game cubes that we won't have to change lasers on. So now that we have it reading discs again, uh, it's time to let's let's put it back together a bit. So I'm going to take this apart so I can hook the shielding back up to the drive, and we'll go from there. So I put the remainder of the screws back into the board that was underneath here and then reattached the shield to the optical drive. So now we can just go ahead and put that back together there. Now I do want to do a quick check, make sure it still works after I've got everything all screwed in. Okay, still works. Good. <laughs> I always like to double check as I do stages of reassembly. Okay, so when it comes to the reassembly, there's a couple of little tricks that you got to remember. First one is, is that, uh, is that you've got to put these three screws in first uh, and this one before you put the power switch back up because it, this covers those three areas or two, mm, two areas. So we've got to put those two, those three in and then this one back over here. And then we put the power switch and the fan in place. So when you put the power switch and the fan in place, this board ha hangs over top of this screw so you can't get to it. And the fan is over top of these three screws so you can't get to them. So that's why you have to put those ones in first. Otherwise, you'll end up with four extra screws at the end and you'll go, I have no idea where those went. Okay, the last screws to do are screwing down these metal things for the front ports. I believe these are extra grounds. No extra screws, just the way you want repairs to go. We're just gonna put the front on. Okay, back's on. For those of you maybe just cleaning a GameCube, you might wanna know this information. There is a dust filter screen in here, which is actually removable. And you can actually take it out to get a better cleaning of the dust that's on there. Uh, when you're going to put your lid back on your GameCube, open the tray. Okay. Um, you stand, a, you know, it goes, it'll go on easier. Plus you won't, these, uh, the switches for the door switch back here, they're very uh, fragile and easy to break. And if you do that, then you can't close your GameCube and you'll have a problem. So there we go. Everything is back on. Now I can close the lid, pick her up, flip her over, and we'll put back in our four Torx, or uh, not Torx, game bit screws that go in the bottom. One. All four screws have been returned to the bottom. And now we're just going to put on our little covers. All put back together. All right, another GameCube saved from e-waste. And that's what I like to do. Uh, we got rid of that rattle, whatever that little piece of whatever that was. We got it out of here, so now the unit doesn't rattle when you shake it. Not that you should shake it. Uh, we fixed the laser was hoping it was going to be capacitors because I never like doing pot tweaks unless I absolutely have to. Uh, but in this case, I absolutely had to. Luckily, we didn't have to adjust it too much, just a little bit down from where it was originally, uh, from five and 525 ohms down to 350 ohms. 400 probably would have worked fine, but I really didn't feel like sitting there and tweaking things back and forth. 350 was good enough. Uh, and it's still got some room to go. You can go all the way down to 150 before they say stop. So that's it for this week. If you like this kind of content, smash that like button, hit subscribe, get notifications for any time I put out videos. Right now my schedule is every two weeks. I put out a video every two weeks on Fridays. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.